Yeehaw, let's spin some cowboy hat pins. So when I moved to Texas in 2009, I noticed that uh, there were a lot of these spun copper cowboy hat, uh, I guess they're ashtrays, and I've even seen plans for them in different sort of shop manuals and, and handouts and things like that. So I thought it was just a, a really interesting use of a metal spinning with a little bit of metal working on top of that. And so I came up with my own version, uh, which were these little uh, cowboy hat pins. And uh, this is in spun aluminum, and then those two are spun copper and enameled. And you can see how the, the spinning is uh, sort of collapsed in with subsequent punching that we'll do after we're done on the lathe work. And then for today, we're gonna do uh, two inch pewter cowboy hats, and that's spun out of uh, a one millimeter thick disc of pewter. And then at first it's spun and it sort of ends up like a, uh, maybe more like a pilgrim's hat or something like that, uh, because it is gonna get collapsed back down with the, uh, the punching process later. So we'll get started on that. All right, so I've got the one millimeter thick two inch pewter disc set up in the, uh, the chuck for the first stage of the cowboy hat with the undersized follower block. It's been uh, lubricated and centered and everything is tightened down so we're ready to go. I'll spin it just a little bit to get it seated. Now because pewter doesn't work harden, it's very easy to thin it while you're working. I'm gonna get that seated and then switch the chuck. And so you wanna make sure that you're not putting too much initial pressure on it and that also you have a fair amount of pressure while back spinning or going the other direction. And I do want to spin this down pretty tightly to the chuck since it has a set form that I want to replicate. I usually do a bunch of these at a time when I do them. And that's where a chuck can come in handy for uniformity. So now with the oversized follower block, that'll keep the blank from tilting or possibly tearing out. And again, with small scale spinnings, it's not so, there's not so much force involved, but it does take a fair amount of finesse to get your tool where it needs to go. I'm just gonna trim that just so it's nice and concentric. Trim's nice and easy. Pewter is just a dream to spin with. And we're set up for the the first stage of the cowboy hat at this point is probably looking a little bit more like a pilgrim hat and then we'll do the rest of the work off the lathe. All right so the next stage after spinning is to put the uh, little indentation in the top of the hat there. So what we'll do is we'll do that with a dapping punch which is a spherical steel punch used to uh, make hemispheres in metal. So we'll just set that into the top and then strike straight down And you'll notice that it'll start lowering the overall height of the, the spinning, which is why we kind of spin it over a little bit to that um, kind of pilgrim hat size. And then you get kind of a personal decision about your aesthetics overall of the hat shape. Um, but that looks like a good impression there. And then to get the uh, kind of crimps on the side of the hat, what I've found works best is to use a a chasing tool 
uh, which is just a polished steel tool in different end shapes and to hit on the sides of the hat and holding it really becomes an issue. So uh, I don't want to hold it just straight in the vise because it'll, it'll crunch it and make marks on it and everything. So I take urethane pads on either side of the piece and then clamp it in there. And these I kind of do at a slight angle. So set that up at a slight angle there. And again, it's sort of personal aesthetics as far as how far you want to have those impressions on the side of the hat. So we've got one side there, and then you want to keep track of where it is. So you don't want them exactly opposite each other. They sort of converge into a point there. So set that up again. Setting up the chasing tool. You want to kind of remember what you did before, so it's kind of even. See here, they're not exactly opposite of each other, but sort of converging a little bit there. So we have the two sides of it. And then uh, bending up the brim is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see these nylon pliers get a lot of use. Uh, but I like these again because the teeth of a steel pliers don't would dig into the soft pewter. So again, you're sort of looking at those uh, indentations on the top of the hat and sort of following those a little bit. Just kind of rolling up the brim just a little. It's kind of a matter of personal choice and aesthetic for it on how it's looking. And you can certainly decorate that brim with a variety of different, in this case, it's just a, a cord that's that's been glued on there, or you could twist wire or something like that. We're gonna leave it just sort of unornamented for now. Uh, I think I might wanna just sort of tighten up the brim overall. I'm gonna keep the urethane pad there just to keep it from marring. I know there's all different styles of hats, uh, but I think that's an overall good shape. And then the last stage will just be soldering a little tie tack pin on the back there. All right, so the first stage of soldering the, the tie tack onto the, the cowboy hat pin is I'm just going to melt some pewter solder onto the head of the tie tack. Now, if you've seen our basic soldering video, uh, soldering pewter is a lot different because of the low melting point of solder. So this is uh, solder that's typically used for much lower temperature operations like in plumbing or electronics or something like that. So it has a separate flux. And then also you don't want any pewter work to contaminate any area where you might be using higher temperature metals like uh, copper or silver or something like that. So I use uh, purple to color code anything that's for pewter only. Um, and so this fire brick is only with uh, pewter and pewter fluxes and things like that. So just like for any other soldering, you need to flux, which will keep the metal clean as it's heating up. So I've applied flux to the location where the pin's gonna go, as well as to the head of the pin. I'm gonna place the solder near it. And heat it up. You'll notice that this takes very little heat. And it's on the head there. And then what we can do is Yep, didn't quite get all of it stuck on there. And then we'll just preheat the pewter just a little. And you can see it flow. And you need to stay in place until the solder cools down and hardens. Not the prettiest job. I used a little bit too much solder, but it'll certainly work. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.